Dr. Stone is probably one of the unique anime out there, with good character design, an interesting storyline, and is also pretty knowledgeable. This show already had two seasons, and with the third one airing this year, I think it is the perfect time to re-watch the previous ones. But we know that it takes a lot of time to re-watch a show, that's why we bring you this recap. It was a normal day in Japan, everything was going great, pleasant weather, birds were chirping, and everyone was going to do work and stuff. Taiju, one of the main protagonists of this anime, was building up the courage to confess to his crush Yuzuria. As he was about to confess, suddenly, a beam of light appeared out of nowhere, and everyone turned into statues made of stone. Three thousand years pass by, and only one man breaks out of the stone statue, Senku. A smart yet weak human who was friends with Taiju and studied in the same school as him. He was really smart and was invested in science a lot. On the other hand, we see Taiju in his statue state in a cave. He was there, waiting and waiting until some nitric acid that came from bats fell on him, which resulted in Taiju getting freed from the stone statue. Taiju is not smart, but has a great build. Taiju, alone in the cave, wakes up from his old state explores a little bit more, finds Yuzuriya's statue under a tree, and promises to himself that he will free her. On the tree were some directions which he followed, not knowing where it will lead, and eventually finds Senku, his friend. Senku takes Taiju to his base where they talk a lot, and Senku tells Taiju that it has been 3,700 years since all of humanity was turned into stone. They start to invent tools to hunt and stuff, and the next day they go to a cave, where Senku explains to Taiju that the reason they woke up could be related to the nitric acid and how he has already been testing on petrified birds with no results. Days turn into months, and months turn into a whole year, when they finally make a mixture that results in freeing the petrified bird. The next day, they went to Yuzuriha's body and decide to carry it back home. While they were, a group of lions starts to chase them, so they use the liquid on a teenager by the name of Tsukasa who quickly defeats the lions with nothing but physical strength. They take Tsukasa back to base, and soon went to the beach, where Tsukasa tells Senku his plan to not revive any corrupted adults while smashing the head of one. Senku stops him saying that he will revive everyone, including the corrupt adults. So they part ways. Oh, and they also revive Yuzuria after this all happens. Senku and the others destroy their base, leaving nothing behind, and head towards the mountain to grab some gunpowder to defeat Tsukasa. They notice smoke coming from the forest, and they quickly make their own smoke signal which Tsukasa sees. Tsukasa heads there and takes Yuzuriha hostage asking for the recipe of the revival fluid which Senku had to tell, knowing that Tsukasa will kill him anyway, even if he tells the recipe or not. Tsukasa gives Senku an offer that if he gives up science, Tsukasa will not kill him. Of course, Senku refuses, and Tsukasa breaks his neck. Yuzuriha and Taiju run off with Senku's body and try to revive him but failed. They find remains of stone from when Senku became free of being a statue and recall the memory that if they pour the liquid on it, it might heal Senku's neck as well. So they do, and it works. Senku asks the two of them to go and infiltrate Tsukasa's base because Tsukasa thinks Senku is dead and this might be the perfect opportunity. Senku goes to the smoke signal he saw earlier and finds a girl by the name of Koaku lying there under a fallen tree. He manages to free her, and soon, Koaku takes Senku to her village where two boys, Kinro and Ginro, attack him, but Koaku saves him. Kinro and Ginro explain that it's forbidden to bring any other human to the village when Senku makes a lot of bubbles. Confused, Kinro and Ginro start to attack the bubbles when Chrome arrives at the scene telling them that the bubbles are safe and challenges Senku in a sorcerer battle. Chrome thought that it would be an easy victory for him as he had no idea how smart Senku really is. Chrome first showed Senku how he can change the color of fire, but Senku was not surprised at all, so Chrome went on to rub a sulfur ball and created small lightning. Senku goes ahead and uses the sulfur ball creating a lot more lightning than Chrome did. Word spread out throughout the whole village about Senku, and from there, Senku starts his journey of defeating Tsukasa. He builds up his kingdom of science there and forges war against the Empire of Might. He finds a lot of resources in Chrome's little hut and asks him about this. Chrome tells Senku that he wants to save Kohaku's sister with it, 
but he can't because he doesn't know how to develop the medicine. Thus, they both cooperate and start their journey. Senku meets a lot of new people there, like an old man who is a master blacksmith, a young girl who wears a fruit on her head, and he even married Kohaku's sister. Well, it wasn't that simple as he had to battle a lot of people to win this right. The main question here is, why he wanted to marry her sister? Actually, Senku wanted some alcohol, and he was told that he'd get a lot of it if he wins the tournament. Ignoring the fact that they broke up after like two minutes because Senku wasn't interested in any love life and stuff. Senku develops a lot of things there like new weapons, electricity, bulbs, and even Coca-Cola. After all this, Senku learned something which changed the whole anime. What did he learn? Well, Senku learns that this village was actually created by his father, who, at the time of humanity turning into stone, was in space with his fellow friends. I won't go into detail regarding this arc, but I will tell you one thing this arc was emotional. So this was it. Complete Dr. Stone Season 1 Recap. Season 2 Recap is on its way, so stay tuned.